welcome to the 2016 Excel Expert Tutorial, brought to you by Advanced Excel Training. In this video, we'll be looking at how to manage your workbook options and settings. Objective 1.1 includes the following. Saving your workbook as a template, hiding and displaying your ribbon tabs, enabling macros in your workbook, copying macros in your workbook, referencing data in another workbook, and referencing table data using structured references. Let's start by looking how to save your workbook as a template. But first, what is a template? A template is basically an Excel document with a preset layout. It may contain worksheets, formulas, formatting, and your personalized styles. You can use your template to create reusable workbooks with a consistent look. For example, if you have a budget every month, that's exactly the same. You don't have to keep recreating it or copying it over and over. You can just save it as a template. Once you have got your worksheet set up the way you want it, you can do the following to save it as a template. Go to File, Save As, Browse, fill in the name in the name box. Below the name box is the file type. Select Excel template. If your worksheet contains macros, select Excel macro enable template. Notice Excel automatically puts your template in the custom office template folder. And then lastly, all you need to do is click save. To create a new workbook from your custom template, click file, new, personal, and you'll find your custom templates in your personal folder. The personal folder can also be labeled custom, depending on your Excel version. Next, let's look at how to hide and display your ribbon tabs. Your main tabs such as Home, Insert and Page Layout that are displayed across the top of your ribbon are actually optional. If there is a tab that you do not use, you can temporarily hide it. And you can easily display it again when you need it. Some tabs, such as the Developer tab, are hidden by default. To hide and display your tab ribbons, you can do the following. Click File, go to Options, go to Customize Ribbon, select the checkbox to display the hidden tab, or clear the checkbox to hide a tab. Then you can click OK to close the dialog box and save your changes. Enabling macros in your workbook. Microsoft Visual Basic for Applications or VBA macros are some of the most powerful features in Office 2016. You can create macros to automate repetitive tasks or even run a lengthy series of commands. However, this means that macros can be used for malicious purposes such as trashing your files, stealing your data, and installing malware. Once a macro has run, you will not be able to reverse its actions. And for this reason, if you open a workbook that contains a macro, Excel will disable it by default. At this point, you have three choices. If the workbook comes from a source that you trust, you can enable it. If it comes from a source that you trust but were not expecting, just leave it disabled. And if it comes from a source that you do not trust, leave the macro disabled and close the information bar. To enable the macro after you have closed the security warning information bar, you can go to File, Info, Enable Content, and then enable the macros in the security warning. Copying macros between workbooks. If you receive a workbook that contains a macro that you find useful, you might want to use it in another workbook. You can copy your macro from one workbook to another. You can also make your macros easily available by storing them in the personal macro workbook folder. Before you can use this folder, you'll have to create it by recording a new macro and storing it in the personal macro workbook. To copy a macro from one workbook to another, open the workbook that contains the macro you want to copy. Then, 
open or create the workbook that you want to copy the macro to. Once both workbooks are open, select the Developer tab. Go to the Codes group and select Visual Basic. In the Project Explorer, locate the workbook with a macro you want to copy. Open the branches until you see the content of the Modules folder. You can now drag the module or macro you want to copy to the other branch of the other workbook. Excel will then copy the macro from one workbook to another. To record a macro and create a personal macro folder, you can do the following. Go to the Developer tab and in the Codes group select Record Macro. When the dialog box opens, give your macro a name. Be sure to store it in the Personal Macro Workbook. And once you are done, click OK. Then you can map your sequence of tasks and click Stop Recording when you are done. Storing your macro in the Personal Macro folder ensures it will be easily accessible. Although you'll be able to see it in the Personal Macro workbook in the Visual Basic Editor, the workbook does not appear within the regular Excel interface because it is hidden by default. To unhide it, go to the View tab. In the Windows group, click Unhide. Then select Personal and click OK. If you want to hide it again, make sure you are in the Personal window. Once you are in the Personal window, just click Hide. Referencing data in another workbook. If you have data in one workbook, and want to use it in another workbook, you can set up a link between your two workbooks. You can reference a cell or a range of cells in your formulas. The workbook that contains the original data is called a source workbook, while the workbook referencing the source data is called a dependent workbook or a client. The purpose of setting up these links between your workbooks is to avoid duplicating data in multiple workbooks. To create a link, make sure your source workbook is open. Start your formula in your dependent workbook. You can stop at the point where you want to reference the external data. Then on the View tab in the Windows group, click Switch Window and select the source workbook. You can then click the cells that you want to reference in your formula. You can then complete your formula and press enter. To make sure your source data is reflecting correctly, you can update the link. If both workbooks are open, Excel automatically updates the link. If the source workbook is closed, Excel displays a warning in the information bar that will tell you that the automatic links have been disabled. You can then click Enable Content. Or you can update them manually by going to the Data tab. In the Connections group, click Edit Link. In the Edit Link dialog box, click Update Values. Referencing table data using structured references. When you need to reference part of a table in your formula, you could use a range reference. It will point to the data in the table that you want to use in your calculation. However, if you replace the range reference with a defined name, it makes it easier to understand the calculation. With this in mind, Excel automatically creates names for the table fields, also known as structured references. If you want to calculate the sum of a field, such as quantity on hand, your formula will look like this. Start the formula. Stop at the point where you want to insert your structured reference. Enter the name of the table you want to reference, followed by the left square brackets. Excel then offers predefined specifiers such as all, data, 
headers, and totals. Excel also generates column specifiers based on the text in the column headers. These column specifiers reference the data and not the header or the total. Enter the column specifier followed by the right square bracket. Then complete your formula and press enter. Well, that's a wrap for Objective 1.1. We had a look at how to save your workbook as a template, hide and display ribbon tabs, enable macros in your workbook, copy macros in your workbook, reference data in other workbooks, and reference table data using structured references. Don't forget to check out the next video for more Excel 2016 expert exam skills. We'll be looking at how to protect your data and restrict editing. I'm Deborah Gray and I look forward to hosting you in the next video.